Okay, so welcome everybody. Today is uh, Wednesday, the 31st of March, and this is the House Transportation Committee, and welcome all anyone that's watching in. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of bill introduction this morning by the members uh, that have bills on the wall in our committee, and uh, so, so welcome and welcome to everybody. Uh, so uh, members, we're going to start this, and we have promised uh, uh, Representative Smith and McCormick, they would go first this morning, uh, and that's what we'll do. Uh, but uh, just we really don't need just just for everybody's edification, uh, just just a high level overview of your bill. And um, should the committee decide to take up any of our bills, we'll have Anthea walk us through the bill when the time comes uh, to, uh, to to have more discussions on it. So this is really a sales call for everybody today, uh, selling a bill to, to the committee to, uh, to see if we can see if, if you can generate some interest within the committee. So, uh, so with that, uh, any questions before we get started this morning? And you guys are pretty easy. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so good. So uh, Representative Smith, uh, Representative Smith and Representative McCormick have uh, uh, H-262, and, and we know how to get there. It's, it's on our committee page, under bills in committee, uh, or uh, the members, we have a, uh, a document that Lori sent to us uh, a week, to maybe a little bit longer than that ago, that uh, if you decide to go to that document, it has uh, a link to the bills in the document. So I, I'm lucky I was able to get it over to uh, my uh, OneDrive. So that's where I have mine labeled, but everybody has their own. So if, if everybody's ready uh, and has a copy of the bill in front of them, uh, we'll get, get started. So Representative Smith, would you like to take us through uh, your bill with the assistance of Representative McCormick? I would. I, I'll start and uh, Kurt can fill in the blanks that I missed. I mean, Representative okay. McCormick, uh, okay. for the record, Representative Brian Smith, uh, I'm introducing House Bill 262. I believe it's for the third time. And I think I've got it tweaked so that uh, I'm, I'm hoping that this bill will be successful in going through our committee. Uh, to start with, I would like to read, I, I, I resubmitted my res uh, registration for my truck the other day. And those little envelopes that they send to you that you have to tear apart and get mad at all the time. On the envelope, I'm going to read what the state of Vermont thinks about this. Texting and driving is one of the most dangerous forms of distracted driving. At any given moment across America, approximately 660,000 drivers are using and manipulating electronic devices while driving. A number that has held steady since 2010. Distracted driving has become a deadly epidemic on America's roadways, and distracted drivers aren't just a threat to themselves or a danger to everyone else on the road. In Vermont, texting while driving carries a fine of $230 and five points for the first offense, and that fine increases to $479 for the second and subsequent offenses. Please remember, text one or call should wreck it all. This is what the state of Vermont is putting on these right here. So that being said, uh, everyone has seen a lot of the advertising done on television about texting and driving. I think it's a very serious problem. And I think we need to sink some teeth into this bill and stiffen the penalties. Uh, 262, uh, I sent a, a comparison sheet to members yesterday uh, that Anthea sent to me. And if you do have it, you can see the differences in the, in the fines and in the points. It increases. However, the, uh, for the young drivers, the fines are reduced. I don't think it's the money factor that is going to affect these kids uh, as much as the point structure will. They're more concerned, even and adults as well, more concerned about uh, losing their license than they are paying a fine. And I spoke with... Uh, oh, uh, I was reading the paper that in Hardwick and St. John Rick Police Departments uh, are picking up the pace a little bit in their communities and they're ticketing distracted drivers and texting and driving. 
And I spoke with uh, Chief Cochran of Hardwick, and I explained my bill to him. He was in agreement with me. Uh, he thought he was going to have to come to Montpelier to testify. Uh, and I explained to him he could do it over uh, Zoom if he, if he wishes. And uh, he indicated to me that his feelings were the fines. Uh, it's kind of a tough time right now for Vermonters while COVID-19 is shutting down a lot of things and killing a lot of jobs. He'd rather see the points attacked and increased. Uh, and I wouldn't have a problem. Uh, I, I think I spoke with you, Representative McCormick, about this. Uh, I wouldn't have a problem holding off on the fines until like July 2022, July 22, I mean. Uh, but I think it's an important bill that we we stiffen things up and make people aware that we want to stop people dying on the highway. Um, that's pretty much what the bill does. And uh, when Anthea wants to read through it, uh, my little sentence that I wrote here, uh, if we're serious about reducing accidents, serious injuries and or deaths on Vermont's highways, then we need to toughen up our existing laws. Uh, that's my pitch. Uh, I think everybody heard it that was in transportation. They heard it last year. And I seriously and sincerely hope that the committee will consider this serious enough to push through to the Senate. Thank you. Uh, Representative McCormick. You're muted. Thank, yeah, right. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I'm remembering the debate last year and some of the testimony on them, but public safety came in. They were neutral last year, whereas a year before they were opposed to it, I believe. And last year they were neutral. And the only thing they said you know, negative about it was they were concerned that people um, you know, would um, um, you know, not be able to afford it um, you, and maybe even lose their licenses. And you know, that, those are the concerns of the legislature um, and ultimately it could be a concern in a court. But um, it's my opinion that public safety should be concerned with public safety and enforcing the law. Uh, and carrying out the law. So that those that was the gist of their testimony as, as I recall. I don't know if anyone else's memory is different. That would be in the 2019 session. No, it's 2020 session, I guess, while we were in while we were together. Um, and I heard um, statistic uh, just the other day um, that nationwide um, car registrations, miles driven are still dropping. And yet, accident uh, death uh, causing accidents are rising. So it's an interesting change. Um, uh, you know, fewer miles being driven out there and more deadly accidents. Uh, I would think that's got to be attributable to um, to uh, the hand devices because that's that's what's changed. Uh, the, the the downward trend in in car registrations and miles began around 2001 and it goes up a little bit you know, when, when the price of gas did, but it's still generally down and yet accidents are generally up. I don't know about Vermont um, and you guys probably had that testimony that testimony I probably that had I probably back in, oh, I'm starting to echo. Oh, it stopped. Um, you may have gotten that testimony uh, this year that I may have missed for, for Vermont when you, when you had the safety people in. But um, that's what I heard uh, tapping nationwide. And I, I don't know if it's happening in Vermont, but I would think that it would be. We, we are not that far out of these uh, trends usually. So um, it might satisfy a lot of people if we, if we did not raise the penalties, but raise the points. So uh, the, 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 that would be the penalty that would be raised, not not monetary. Um, and I, you know, I gave a, my pitch yesterday about what, how I noticed it here in Burlington, perhaps more than some of you might in, in your districts, because of all the stop signs here and all the, the lights, and you know, you just see people lined up behind a light beeping at the first car because the first car is on the telephone and the lights turn green. <laughs> That's just a nuisance, but. Um, <laughs> 
I guess not so dangerous, but it is it is dangerous. I tell you, I've seen a number of cars literally rolling at stop signs, slowly, but rolling out into the intersection while the young man's head is down in his phone. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Representative McCormick. Uh, and I did note that the uh, information that uh, Representative Smith sent us, I was, I was really notified, uh, looking at, you have the, some, some of the monetary uh, fines you've reduced considerably, but the points are up. And I think that uh, we, we could have a conversation on that as, as we move forward. And I think it points to what Representative McCormick just said that we're, we're looking at points more than money. Um, and will that get people's attention? I, I, I agree with uh, Representative McCormick that I have seen in my work, uh, just people totally ignoring the highway and, and, and texting. Uh, so this is a, a serious problem. So anybody have any questions for either, either one of our two committee mates? I'm gonna to get to my questions log here. Oh, I see Representative McCoy, then Representative Burke. Thank you. Um, at how many points do you lose your license and for how long? Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember. I don't know. I know that when you get to 10 points, uh, it's a loss of license. And I, I think 30 days, Patty. Okay. I'm, uh, Representative, I'm, I'm, I'm not positive. I think Anthea could better answer that. Okay, and additionally, I think it's lower for uh, teenagers. I think it's not 10 points. It may be six points or five points or something I'm remembering that theirs is much lower than in a, you know. The ju yeah, junior <laughs> operators are lower. The, the, yeah, and, okay. And part of this bill reduces the, the, the monetary part of the fine to junior operators as well. Okay, all right, thank you. Hey, uh, Representative Burke. Yeah, I'm just curious. Do we, um, do they have, they must have statistics on how many uh, accidents are caused by, by texting and or, and or phones or, and especially like how many fatal accidents. I would just, would just be helpful to have that information. Mm -hmm. If we're trying to, if you would like me to try to find that for your representative, I will. Yeah, I just think you know if we're going to move this bill ahead, that that might be questions that that other people have. Sure. I mean, I. It's not that I'm against this. I just thought it would be helpful to have some data. Yep. Sounds like uh, homework for the for the sponsors. Yes. yes, it does. I love homework. Yeah. Good. Uh, you all set, Representative Burke? Okay, uh, Representative Savage? I, uh, just a quick comment. Um, as recently as Monday morning, um, I almost got into a head-on collision with somebody as she was texting and she was on my side of the, of the road. Um, I had no place to go. I, this was on my street, like a block and a half up the street. And I had no place to go because there was kids playing in the front yard. So I just stopped. Um, and she, I blew my horn. She finally got her attention. And she looked up surprised. Like, oh. <laughs> and she stopped in time. But it was close. But that was right on my street. So it's, it's out there. Did you get her license number? No, I was too upset. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would add that... Uh... I have been very persistent about this bill. And I, I think I explained it to the committee last year. Uh, probably four years ago, I was riding my motorcycle through Island Pond. And there's some corners on the other side of Island Pond. And a small car was straddling the line. And if I'd been in a car, I would have been hit. Because uh, I wouldn't have been able to get far enough over so this guy would miss me. But when he went by me, it was a young young person. When he went by me, he, was, he wasn't even looking when he went by me. And I really don't want to die when I'm riding a car, or a motorcycle or a car or driving a car on the road. I don't want to die because of somebody else's inability to keep their eyes on the road. And uh, that's the importance of this bill. 
Thank you, and uh, Representative White. Thank you, um, <coughs> Chairman Shaw. <laughs> Sorry, I was. <laughs> uh, so I appreciate this bill, Representative Smith, and I agree with a lot of it. I think something that makes me a little bit uncomfortable with moving it forward is it seems like generally we've been trying to move away from fines or point systems that remove someone's license because we've realized the ramifications of someone losing a license has this just a very big effect on their life that impacts their ability to work a job, ability to see, to get food security in some situations. Um, and it just has like this really long-term trickle down effect. Um, so I'm wary of, of fines or measures that make it more likely that someone will lose a license for an offense because of that. Although I understand the public safety element. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. If you had any thoughts on um, how we balance the potential for someone to lose a license or their inability to use a car with the public safety aspect. And if you've considered that as you've drafted the bill. I did. So, uh, oh, did we no, end this? Go ahead. I apologize if we did. Well, can we can we just take take a little break right here? And that's a great question, uh, Representative White, because we're just in a, a like a little fact finding thing today. Uh, I I if it's okay with everybody, I think uh, if we could just kind of get a feeling by a show of hands or something that we have some interest in this bill and would like to take a little more testimony or have further discussion, is that something everybody's comfortable with doing right now? Do you have enough information to feel good about moving it along? So if you could just kind of like raise your hand or something and we'll, we'll kind of mark it down that. Uh, so the majority wants to hear a little bit more about this. So, so Representative Smith and Representative McCormick, thank you. And we will uh, we'll have another stab at this uh, at a little later date. We're just trying to. Right. Thank you, okay. everyone. All right. Thank you. All right. uh, Molly, uh, but Molly, before we move on, I see uh, Representative Burke, I see you have your hand yeah, up. Yeah, I just so wanted to, to respond to that. I mean, I, I, I think it is great, Representative White, that you bring up this issue. When you think about it, all right, if somebody gets five points on their license, aren't they going to really think twice about doing it again and getting another five points? I mean, you know, to me, you know, unless we have like a I don't know, unless first offense is five points, second offense is another three, you know, to get somebody close to it. I, I'm just, I know we don't want to discuss it right now, but I'm just saying that I think that um, it should be a wake up call to somebody. It's not like they lose their license immediately. I think they almost do, if I recall, for the junior operator, they have that, that quirk in there that they lose it a lot quicker. I think five might push yeah. them when they actually lose it. Yeah, yeah they do, they do. Further in, you know, testimony. Good. So we will take more test testimony on this to have further conversation uh, as, as we move forward. And, and when we get, should we decide to keep going with it, when we get the Department of Public Safety in here, they'll certainly be able to help us with those stats. All right. Thank you. So, okay. Uh, Thank you.